Time to start recording. Today's lecture is backup and recovery. The video link at the bottom is a little stale, but if you, if you navigate to it, you'll see similar videos. It's a video of a large tape library with a robot. It's really cool. Uh, we'll talk about those a little bit later. Uh, well, why bother with backups? I think we all know the answer to this one. Hard drives fail. Approximately 1% per year is the average failure rate for hard drives. The best might be half a percent a year, but still that's non-trivial when you have hundreds or thousands of disk drives in your data center. Equally, or maybe more important, people do RM star. It's often a legal requirement. Any of your financial data needs to be stored for seven years. And if you're a public company, meaning your stock is traded on the stock exchange, then there are a whole bunch of other documents that you have to keep around for seven years as well, some of them longer. There's one more requirement or good reason to bother with backups that I didn't mention here because it wasn't super relevant when I wrote these slides, but it's pretty relevant now. What I'm thinking of is ransomware. The typical mode of operation for ransomware is to have malware encrypt all the files it can find. And then you have to pay for the key to get them decrypted. If you have a good backup, you can just blow everything away and restore. Where are we going to back up? We could back up to disk. And at home, that's most likely what we do because disk is pretty cheap and we don't need a ton of it. And we don't need a ton of backups. So that's, that's what I do. I have old laptops and old hard drives around and I do some backups on them and put them on the shelf. Um, optical, we can burn to CDs or DVDs. Not so common for backups these days because they're slow and small. And they haven't kept up with disk and tape. And finally, tape. Tape's been around since the, the dawn of the computing era. Um, and it's going to be around a while longer. So when I wrote this slide, the current best, fastest, highest capacity tape was a format called LTO6. And that can store 2.5 terabytes per cartridge. Each cartridge is about, it's about the size of a videotape cassette. And we can read and write to those tapes at 160 megabytes a second. That's faster than a single hard drive. Power efficiency is something that's on everybody's radar now. An advantage of tape is tape only draws power when they're running. And large automated tape silos can store up to 100,000 tapes. Hey, Kyle, thanks for the update on LTO6. Uh, yes, it is smaller than a VHS. I think it's, isn't it? I wanted to say it's like an eight track tape, but those are really old and nobody knows what they are. So maybe if you, they don't, I don't know. They probably don't trust, they don't trust their backups or maybe they didn't have everything backed up. We'll talk a little bit more about tape in a minute. Uh, never underestimate the bandwidth. 
of a station wagon full of tapes hurtling down the highway. This comes from one of the pioneers of computer networks. The coolest example I know of this in at least my career, and I bet it still happens, in the oil, the oil exploration in the Gulf of Mexico in the Southern United States collects huge amounts of data, right? Sonar and different things from the bottom. They store those on big disk arrays. They take the disk arrays from the middle of the Gulf of the Mexico on a helicopter, fly the disk arrays to Houston, where the big high performance computing center is to analyze the data. Um, there, might as well address that. some comments in the chat about tape. Somebody said, is tape degrades? How safe are they? Um, if you maintain your tapes properly, they're very safe and very reliable. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, AWS Glacier, I'm not really familiar with, but I'm guessing that's an, an Amazon Web Services backup product. There's nothing that special about cloud services from an admin standpoint. The best way for an admin to think about the cloud is think about it as a different data center. It's a remote data center that's managed largely by somebody else. So it's got to have a backup infrastructure service available and you can buy that. And then you can also have them apparently ship you the tapes. That makes sense because Amazon for a lot of big companies is another data center. So they might have a data center in Los Angeles, a data center in New York, um, and an Amazon data center. And then maybe they put that one in a different time zone. <clears throat> All right. A common pattern strategy for backup retention is to keep your daily backups for a week keep your weekly backups for a month, your monthlies for a year, and your yearlies for seven years. That's a lot of tape, but it's a pretty common strategy. How many times is, how many tapes is that? Well, there's, at a minimum, we've got seven, 12, well, if they're, we're not sharing, let's say we're not. Another four, another seven. How will we keep track of them all? Yeah, Kyle knows there's a lot to keep track of and I'm gonna ask him for some input in a minute. For a large data center, you're gonna use commercial backup software. Net backup is maybe the, the best known one or the most popular one, certainly one I came across the most in data centers. Every vendor has one, IBM has one, Sun has one, right? What do they do? Well, they'll do network and local backup. So they can back up from local disk, right? Physically attached disk to physically attached tape. But not every server is gonna have tape drives attached to it. We, it's very common to also back up over the network. So the commercial backup software 
will have a program that runs on your generic data center server. You call that an agent. That program, that agent on the system being backed up, reads from the disk and then streams across the network as fast as it can to the backup server and the backup server writes it to tape. Going to skip this guy and come back to them. Integration with database servers. If your database server is reading and writing to the disk, you can't just back up those files because they won't be consistent from the database standpoint, database's viewpoint. Commercial backup software will have a way of integrating with them, with the backup software, so they can coordinate their backups. Finally, I want to talk about tape management. All these tapes, and now let's add a couple other constraints. Each tape can only be written to n times, say 10 times. I think it's much higher, but pick a number. Each tape can only be written to, say, 10 times. Well, we need to then shuffle our tapes around because if we're going to keep this guy for seven years, you know, it's going to be 70 years before we rewrite that tape. That's the, and then the ones we were using for our dailies, well, they would wear out. So we need to manage all these tapes and what's on watch tape where hundreds or thousands of tapes. We could write software. Or we could come up with processes and log books and charts and spreadsheets, but we'd really much better. We'd really much rather buy set, buy it. Right. Uh, let's look at the tape, the questions. Kyle says there were lots and lots of tapes. Um, Amjad has a question about SANS. A SAN is a storage area network. So it's a way of connecting up disk and or tape. We don't use tape very much on the SAN. It's a way of taking a disk and presenting it to any given server. So if you're backing up to the SAN, you're most likely backing up to disk. SAN is just a way of presenting disk to a server. We're not going to use Commvault or Net Backup like Kyle did in his work term. We're going to use the simple, basic tools that administrators use in the lab and use for ad hoc one-off moves. Right? Good for the lab. They're also good for moving data around. There are two main classes, tools that copy file system to file system. And we've seen those, we've seen copy, we've seen copy minus R, we've seen SCP, which is sort of like a, a network aware copy. We haven't seen our sync other than I've said, hey, it's really good, look at it. I'll continue to say that. Uh, and we saw CPIO in the cookbook. Then there are tools that create a single archive from a file system tree. So we take a file system tree or set of files, and then we bundle them up into a single file. Tar is the most popular of those. CPIO is also popular, though a little long in the tooth, a little old. TAR can work in this copy mode. TAR can work in the copy mode. It's just not commonly used. As we mentioned in the cookbook lab, stands for tape archive. But it can write to a tape or a disk. Part of the beauty of the way Linux is set up 
with using files to map to hardware. For certain types of hardware, like a tape, all we have to do is write to the file and our data gets on the tape. What? And also that means I can have a tool that could write to tape or could write to the file system without having to change the tool at all. Hey, Professor. Yes. So is sort of like the ideal way of backing up data to put it all together, like let's say in a tar, um, hash it, and then transfer it to whatever network you're transferring it to, and then compare the two hashes? Maybe, yeah, that's a good strategy. If that's it, like for a home backup, uh, lab backup, you're right that comparing, like checking that the backup is um, not become corrupted when you've copied it somewhere is good practice. Um, the problem with that strategy is I have to read it from my local disk and write it to my local disk and then move it off. It would probably be more desirable to read it from my local disk and then at the same time be writing it to the remote disk. That's what I'm trying, was in the cookbook, in the graded lab, that's what I'm trying to get you to do with Alice backing up, if you will, to S01 taking everything on her W01 home directory and getting it on her home directory on S01. We can do that with SSH and pipes. Yeah, no, I'll give you some hints. We can set up SSH so that we're reading and building an archive on the W01 side, piping it across, unpacking it and expanding it on the S01 side. That'd be the most common way to do it, is the most efficient. Thank you. <clears throat> As we saw in the lab, we now support incremental backups natively. You may or may not like CPIO. You know that I do. Um, it has three modes. It'll copy in, copy out. That means create an archive. Copy in is read an archive and create the files. Copy out is read the files and create the archive. And copy pass is read the files, create the files. So two different spots. We could use CPIO for the last question in the graded lab. We could have on W01, we could run a CPIO command that sends the archive to standard out. And over on S01, we could run a CPIO command that reads an archive from standard in and puts it where it needs to go. Well, actually, I think the slickest way to do it is with CPIO. You could use tar to rsync would work. Rsync is actually the slickest, but we haven't taught you that yet. I've talked a little bit about full and incremental backups, but I'm not sure I've really told you what they are. A full backup copies every file. That's pretty much what we think of as a backup at home. Incremental backups copy every file that has changed since the previous backup. Much faster, use much less space, but can be much more difficult to recover. Because if I have full, if I did a full on Monday, on Sunday, and I did an incremental on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And I come into the office on Thursday and go, ah, my PC died. 
please restore my files. I have to restore the fall. Then I have to restore Mondays. Then I have to restore Tuesdays. Then I have to restore Wednesdays. Okay, now I'm back at Thursday. Yeah, I'll, and then I'll let you think about that one for a minute. I think if you just think about, you'll understand that yes, we, we, we go in order and not reverse order. We go in chronological. We, we think about how the order matters. Well, before I let you go, no, no problem. It's just enterprise backup is big business. Right? It's not a huge business, but it's big enough. Right? Big companies have people who do nothing but manage backup. Last large data center I was involved with was Rogers. And Rogers had three or four people on the backup team, just for their IT systems. Nothing to do with cable, nothing to do with cell phone network, just for the, the, the IT systems. There were three or four people who did nothing but manage the backups and the backup servers. Oh, wait a minute. No, they just managed the backups. There were Unix admins who managed the servers for them. Get good at moving data around. A significant portion of a lot of admins time is spent managing, so, managing storage. If you get good at that and you get fast at it, then it'll save you time and that'll be good and save you stress. Um, one more pitch for rsync. You'll learn it sooner or later. It's a great little tool. I wonder, I'm gonna try and see if I can share a couple videos. I don't know if it's gonna work. If I share my browser and play a video, I'm not going to record those videos. So I'm gonna stop the record, 